Rub up your engines! O'Neill says, what are the best engine oil filters for an 03 Honda Accord? What you want is the high quality oil filters. There are many of them out there. They usually call them synthetic or high mileage. They have better filtration in them. Regardless of how good they filtrate, I still am a firm believer that you change your oil every 5,000 miles with full synthetic oil and the filter, right? Now those filters they say are good up to 10,000 miles, but the oil really isn't, so I would change them. But any of them, Wix, Bosch, you name it, they all make high end filters that as a matter of fact there's only a few companies that make them like uh, mobile one has a synthetic filter right they don't make it the last i saw they were buying them from fram they were the fancy high-end frams and they just put mobile one labels on them because mobile one buys them from fram so any of the high-end ones are good don't go to the auto parts store where they'll try to sell you for 15 bucks do like me buy them on amazon for you know half that price and then store them in your garage like i do miguel como says scotty my car runs good until i accelerate hard and it starts to bog up makes like a rattlesnake sound also i lose power going uphill what do you think it could be well if you really get a rattly noise that's often something's wrong with your timing like the timing chain or timing belt depending on your engine design is warm and the timing's off so then it rattles when you put it on a full load right now the other thing that will often do when you full load and you go up a hill and you try to accelerate high speed is either a clogged fuel filter or a weak fuel pump in that case you change the fuel filter because that's the easy thing to do and then if it still is doing it pressure test the fuel pump and if it's weak replace the fuel pump now you want to change the filter first because a clogged filter will make low pressure and a filter costs like 20 bucks and a pump might cost you five or six hundred bucks so you don't guess with the expensive part you change the filter and if it fixes it great if not then pressure test it because if it still has good pressure then that's not the problem it could be the fuel injectors are clogged lots of things can do it but you do logical in those steps and pressure test rather than just guess and start putting parts on cards fan 12 99 you must be depressed they've been lousy for a while here i got a 2016 ram 1500 big one 150k on it never change the tranny fluid there's no problem do you think i should change it no <laughs> i would have changed it every 40 50 000 miles with the filter you've never touched it it's got 150 000 leave it alone american vehicles are very touchy and if you change the fluid now it may slip it may not even move down the road of its own accord all that fluid that's in it now is somewhat dirty dirt has more friction it drives on the fluid friction you put in new slippery fluid on something that's dirty sometimes it'll start slipping like mad leave it alone generally they don't last much more than 150k anyways you're in bonus territory now and if you change it and lose it you'll kick yourself it might go even more without doing anything but if you do change it now it might start slipping immediately jk lean 90 says i'm buying a used vehicle with only 15,000 miles when you say take it to a mechanic to hook their machine would it be the same to take it to autozone to hook up their machine and read codes no not in the least <laughs> you got minimum wage workers looking at a machine they'll plug it in they'll say there's no codes there's nothing wrong that only gives you basic obd information i have an autel ultra -sys system that does so much data let's say the AutoZone one did 80 points of data i have things that do over a thousand points of data and they're color coded so when you look at the data if it's black it's good and if it's red there's a problem and then we'll find problems that the AutoZone guys wouldn't even know what they mean they're minimum wage workers you really want a mechanic to check it out especially with a vehicle that only has 15,000 miles why would someone want to sell it maybe it was wrecked or flooded you want a mechanic who's got brains and understands cars to say oh that was was flooded don't buy it oh that was in a fire don't buy it oh look at this weird data there's a problem with the car don't buy it you need the mechanics brain power you don't want to just go to a discount auto parts place and have them plug something in and say oh, there's no codes it's fine that's only the tip of the iceberg the rest of the information is hidden that you need a really good machine and someone who knows what the data on it means oh it says alexis es 300 hybrid uk base what are your thoughts well i like the 300s it's a hybrid i'm not particularly a hybrid fan because i know how much money it costs to fix them when they break but being toyota lexus's same company right they last a long time before they break if you're talking about buying a brand new one you'll probably get over 200 000 miles of relatively trouble-free driving 
you're happy with that, go ahead and get it. If you're buying a used one, that's another story. I would not touch a used hybrid car if it had more than maybe 130, 140,000 miles. I wouldn't pay that much for it either because I know what the repairs are when they finally break down. But if you're talking new, no, it'd be very good if you don't mind spending that kind of money. Nanrom says, what do you think of the CVT transmission on the new Corolla? Well, they've been making good CVT transmissions of Corollas for a long time. My son's got a five-year-old Corolla S. It's got a CVT transmission. He drives like a lunatic. He says it gets better gas mileage than it was supposed to, and he likes how fast it is. So, you know, Toyota, if anybody makes a good CVT transmission, it's Toyota. Me, I'm not a CVT fan. If I was going to buy a new Toyota, I'd get a RAV4 or I'd get a Camry because they still have actual automatic transmissions with gears. I just like them better. They cost more money to build, but they last longer. The ones in the Corollas work perfectly fine for what they are, and I don't believe they make an actual automatic transmission Corolla anymore. I think they're all CVTs, so you got no choice. Deluxeham says, I got an 07 Pontiac G6 GT convertible. I have a bad front brake rumble when I come to a stop. What should I look for? First thing you want to do is check the rotors. See if they're warped. If they're warped, they're rumbling, change the rotors in the pads. Simple job, right? But if you say you come to a stop and you get a rumble, there are so many things that can make it rumble. Jack the car up in the air. Watch my video, how to check out your own car suspension system, Scotty. Jack it up, pull on the tires like that. If they go clunka clunka, you need a tie rod. Go like this. If it goes clunka clunka, it needs a ball joint. If it goes clunka clunka anyway, you grab it, you need wheel bearings. Start there. And if you don't find any clunka clunka, replace the rotors and the brake pads. Christopher Diaz says, should I buy a Toyota Land Cruiser now or should I wait for the new one? Okay, well, what do you want? Want. See, the new one they claim they're coming out is a much smaller vehicle. It's only going to be a four banger, four cylinder engine with a turbo, right? If you want the big old V8 Land Cruiser, you got to buy an old one. If you want a smaller version and they're much smaller inside too, and you want to get a lot better gas mileage, I would wait for the new one. It's, what do you want? Do you want the big old monster Land Cruiser or the new modern one that's going to be smaller? Sarah says, Scotty, what's a fair price to replace an axle on the front driver's side of a 2013 Honda Fit? All right. Well, if you want to do it yourself, you can buy those things for like 79 bucks at discount auto parts stores. They work perfectly fine. Putting that in mind, you go to a mechanic, they charge 150 bucks an hour. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they should not charge you more than an hour and a half labor for changing an axle on that little Honda. I can change an axle on that little Honda in about half an hour if I'm in a hurry, right? So, if you can find a place that'll replace it for that kind of money, but realize you can get a good axle for 79 bucks. Don't let them say, well, at the dealer, they're $895 for the axle, and we're we're going to charge $300 to put it on, go somewhere else then. They'd be ripping you off. It's not a hard job, actually. Oh. Corby Roberts says, Scott, I got an 09 Matrix, a 2.4 liter oil burner. I live in Nova Scotia where the cars rust quickly. I just had my rocker panels replaced. What do you think? I should get rid of my trusty rust bucket? Hello to the land of the trailer park boys, Nova Scotia. <laughs> Those guys are screaming. I actually went to school with a guy who was a friend of uh, Mr. Leahy, of course, passed away now, right? Now, if it's rusting away, I mean, there's no point in trying to get too much out of it because eventually your control arms will break off and the car will fall off the road and you'll be killed, right? If it's that bad and it really is a rust bucket, I would just say, Pfft. look under there. If everything's all rusted and the control arms are going to fall off and the brakes are all rotten and rusting away, I'd just say get rid of it because I see a lot of vehicles like that here in New England and now I'm in Rhode Island now and uh, I just tell people just drive it when I tell you it's unsafe get rid of it and sometimes I'll say it's unsafe now get rid of it soon before something breaks when you're on a highway going 60 and you get killed but if you drive just 30 miles an hour what the heck you're not gonna get hurt just keep driving until the wheels fall off <laughs> George Guernsey said, Scotty, 05 Honda Accord, 38,000 miles. How important is new brake fluid? Water is over 4%. Well, you might as well as change it out. It's not that hard to do. You can get a little turkey baster, suck it out of the master cylinder, and then bleed all four wheels. What happens when you get water and it starts rusting the system out, and then you got really expensive parts you're going to buy. If it's working now, but it's got too much water, just bleed the water out of it. It's not that hard to do, or most mechanics will do it for 100 bucks if you don't want to bother getting your hands dirty. But you want to do it now, because if it rusts, things out, then you're talking about really expensive parts. Gilbert Hall says, Scotty, I'm getting a PO193 code in my 2005 F-150. Bad fuel rail pressure sensor. My engine shakes and stalling out. What should I do? Well, replace the fuel sensor. Those things break all the time on Ford. Those fuel rail pressure sensors are always going bad. Now, you want to do it the absolute correct way. You pay a guy like me. We had our fancy scan tool. We do bi-directional testing. We give it different information. We see if it feeds back correctly. You're going to pay somebody like 
like me, 150 bucks an hour to analyze it, you might as well just buy the fuel pressure sensor because it's a known problem with those. They just bolt on and off. Do it first thing in the morning when the engine's cold so the little gas it sprays won't start a fire. It'll be on a cold engine after it sits all night, and you'll probably find that fixes the problem. Tracy Betts says, Scotty, do you have any tattoos? No, I don't have any tattoos. <laughs> None whatsoever. I couldn't think of anything I'd want to stick on that I want to look at forever. And if you've ever seen people as they age with tattoos, the tattoos look horrible. As you age, they kind of fade away and they look like junk. I know so many people my age who got tattoos and now they're kicking themselves. Some of them go to the laser places, try to get them bleached out and get rid of the things. But do you really want to put some sentiment on your arm back or whatever that you're going to have the rest of your life? and as it ages, it's going to look crappier and crappier. Me? No. <laughs> I'm not a sailor. I don't particularly like the sea, so <laughs> I have no tattoos. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.